Welcome. This is Information Service Engineering Lecture 1, Information Natural Language and the Web. In this second section of the first lecture, we are going to talk about communication, language and understanding. So what is communication? Let's start with a dictionary definition. Communication is there defined at Merriam-Webster's as a process by which information is exchanged between individuals through a common system of symbols, signs or behavior. So we are exchanging here information in the terms of messages. So this is the simple communication model. You have a sender and you have a receiver. The sender is also the information source. The receiver is the information target. You have the information now in your mind. What you have to do is you have to transmit this information in terms of a message. For that, what you do, you encode the message into signals. For us humans, these kind of signals could be a language. And of course, to transmit it, this should be speech, for example. Then the communication channel would be simply, you know, the plain air between sender and receiver if they stand next to each other. Or, of course, they can also transfer electronic signals which have been produced out of the language and then transmitted via the Internet. However, the information I want to convey first, I have to encode it into a message. And let's say this is then language and speech. And via our communication channel, I transfer that message to the receiver. The receiver gets or receives this message and has to decode it to get and to reconstruct the information that is in there. However, communication is difficult because each single communication channel might be subject to noise and thereby information loss. So, you know, if it's rather crowded and loud and you talk to somebody else who is not standing directly next to you, it's very likely that he or she does not really get everything or understand everything what you said. And then, of course, we have a miscommunication. However, also, if the channel is really, let's say, not noisy and rather clear, there might be differences in the way how you as a sender encode your message and how the receiver decodes it. So there might be an insufficient encoding that I'm not able, let's say, to put everything in words that I have in my mind. And on the other hand, sender and receiver might have a complete different cultural background. So the same words for the receiver might have a complete different meaning. So you see, these are two problems, noise and information loss on the communication channel, as well as insufficiency in encoding and decoding the information where we might get problems in the communication process and in understanding. So also understanding is a rather essential thing that we will talk about later on. But first, let's have a look at information and how it is transferred. We said one way to transfer the information. So this kind of encoding into a message happens by using language. So this means we have to see what is language. Again, we start with dictionary definitions, this time from the Britannica, and they say language is as a system of conventional spoken manual or written symbols by means of which human beings as members of a social group and participants in its culture express themselves. Okay. And the functions of language include things like communication, which for us, of course, is the most important one as well as the expression of identity, play, imaginative expressions or emotional release. But we will focus on communication with the help of language. So what are the languages we use? As computer scientists, of course, we should definitely distinguish between natural language. This is the language in which I am talking to you and also artificial language. What's artificial language? You will say I'm not using artificial language. You will as soon as you are going to write a computer program, for example. OK, let's have a look. What's natural language? So natural language is defined as a discrete categorical system of symbols 
that combine to convey any sense of meaning. And the most important feature, or let's say property of natural language is that it has evolved naturally and historically in humans, which is very important, through use and repetition without explicitly planning. So it simply happened, it evolved over time in the way like it is today. So a natural language is different from a constructed or formal language, which are referred to as artificial languages, such as, for example, auxiliary languages like Esperanto, like constructed languages, like Klingon, for example, in Star Trek, or, as I already have mentioned, programming languages like C, Python, Java, or what else, or arithmetic languages, or languages that are used to study logics, like description logics or first order logic and something like that. So natural language is a language like English, German, or French, or any other language. Okay, now we have different ways to use this language. One way you see on the screen and the other way you hear from your audio. So I can convey natural language with the act of speech and thereby I receive it by listening and I send it by speaking. If you're looking at text like here on the screen, so you receive it via reading and you transmit it by simply writing. So these are the acts of communication, so how you transmit communication in natural language. Let's have a look at the textual information because this is what we read every day and also we want in the end our computer to understand textual information. There, for the encoding, we distinguish between so-called alphabetic writing systems you know alphabetic writing systems, so most of the Western writing systems are organized exactly this way, which means you have a single character that refers to a single sound. This is a so-called phonemic alphabet. And there are, of course, also so-called consonant alphabets, upshots, where the vowels can be deduced simply from the context of the consonant. So this is a much more efficient encoding by looking at that. So the idea to encode textual information by simply describing the sound of speech is a very clever idea because this restricts and minimizes the number of symbols that you have to use in the end because there are also other kind of textual encoding uh, methods for example you can use syllabic or logographic writing systems in syllabic systems this also involves some mapping between characters and sound but usually refers to larger units to syllables which means for every syllable, you need a different symbol. So therefore you have more symbols. And of course, there are also logographic systems and the logograph is a symbol that rep represents one unit of meaning. So an entire word, for example. And therefore you have to have as many symbols as you need words. So therefore, of course, it's a rather efficient way to encode language with the help of phonemic alphabets. To conclude this, let's have a brief look at artificial languages. So this, for example, is, of course, you will identify the programming language that is used here. So in the, should be Java. And of course, any kind of programming language is an artificial language because it's constructed. But not only programming languages are artificial languages, also constructed languages like, for example, we, we have already referred to that Esperanto or Klingon or Elvish or whatever. Okay, so now we have defined what is the communication process and what is language and how to encode language. One important thing is just missing and this is the act of understanding. So what does it mean to understand something? First of all, Understanding simply to describe it with other words means this is the ability to grasp, to get the meaning of the information because the meaning is rather important. Only if I get the meaning right, then of course the communication is successful because then I can say I have really understood the sender of the message. Okay, the information itself has to be conveyed in a message from sender to receiver by using a specific language. 
And then this information that is conveyed within the message is only then understood by the receiver of the message if the receiver interprets this information correctly. So understanding, this is really important, understanding means correct interpretation because then I'm only able to act accordingly like I was told in this kind of message. Any other way, if I understand something different, so if, let's say, the information then in this communication process on the sender side is different from the information on the receiver side, this means the communication process didn't work correctly and the receiver did not understand the information correctly simply because the receiver was not able to interpret this information correctly. So this is the art of understanding. And before we go deeper into that to see what is it or what are the important factors and properties of a language that are responsible for correct understanding the information, we first look again at the information and we will think about how to measure information and how to quantify information in the next section of this lecture.